Hello again everyone, it is Vince Shooter here for Shooter Multimedia coming to you today from Welcome, North Carolina, just south of Winston-Salem, right in around Lexington. And I am here today at the Richard Childress Racing Museum. Yes, I've made it back. You want to check it out with me? Let's go. Holly Carr, 355. That is cool. What was it seven, eight hundred horsepower, depending on the tune? Nice stuff. Did Did you ever get seats? Uh, no. No. I still have seats. <laughs> well, I, I used to have a bucket. I did. Yeah. I remember there was a bucket on the truck for a while. Yeah. These are all the special edition paint jobs. This must have been a retro race. Atlanta. Remember the remember the Atlanta um, Olympics? Yeah. Ninety six. Okay, this is the actual piece of pavement was first laid in place at Daytona during 78 to 79. It was first raced in the Daytona 579. It was dug up in the summer fall of 2010 to make for the new paving of the track, which will be completed in 2011. And they presented it to Richard Childress. So this is a piece of the pavement that would have been driven over by the winning car. It's an interesting, there's an interesting story that Childress tells that, um, you see there's a picture down here. I guess before winning the Daytona, the, uh, the kid was a real fan of Dale Earnhardt and he gave him a lucky penny, which he put on the dash. I guess it's still on it? Or it's somewhere on the... Yeah, there's the penny. And so it was a lucky penny on the dash and he won the, the 500 in it. And so... When A.J. Dillon was racing, he, uh, there was some kid who, he, you know, he said to him, hey, who's you, who do you like? And the kid said, oh, I'm new, I've never been to racing before. So he gave him his uh, A.J. Dillon hat. And, and then the kid came back and saw him later, and he said, oh, here, here's a lucky penny for the, for the car. And he had no idea of the history of it. And then Dillon went on to win the Daytona 500. So if you get a lucky penny, you, you run with that, because that's, that's a thing. You see how they got that taped off for a better aerodynamics, but... Less cooling. Well, here we are, and, and Jake doesn't want to leave the Tasmanian Devil car. I don't know why. I wonder if you actually got cookies while you're getting your car serviced. Man, the old cars had just such presence, you know? So one of the things I've been able to find out is that this is basically and homage to how the trailer was set up in 2001. In fact, much of this museum is a, uh, an homage to 2001. Timing and scoring monitor for keeping up our, our cars on the track during practice or for the race. This is a practice screen from 2013 as data for 2001 and older is not available to use. Or they'd have 2001 up here.
I took a ton of flack on the last video for not knowing that the cars were in the top. Oh, at least not, you know, a ton of flack. It's on. Luckily, I can't do comments anymore because of the whole cop act thing, so no, no danger of that now. All the well wishers. Keep out. So rare to see a simple keep out sign. Normally, it's like authorized personnel only or something. But there's the black RCR truck. I don't remember this one the last time I was here. That looks a little different. I, 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 this one I remember. I remember that playing mock-up, but this one. Yeah, is this something brand new they're working on, or just something from the history? I do not know. It looks like something older. It looks like, you know, back in the, you know, maybe the Lumina kind of days, but I, I do not know. Or, I don't know, it looks a little bit shorter, too. I mean, is this... Is this, this the sign of things to come? I, I could not tell you. Or is it just something that looks cool? I don't know. I guess I should read the signs. So, the development of Illumina. So, this is the one of Illumina prototypes? All the approvals for the return of the Monte Carlo in 95. It's revised body style for 2000. So, there you go. This, that's, that's what we're dealing with here. And the shop is still here. I don't see the, uh, you know, you can be a gas uh, guy kind of thing that they were testing over here, but still all kinds of stuff for the Children's Institute for Pediatrics Trauma. That's that's an awesomeness that they have going on taking care of people. Very, very, very cool stuff. Yeah, we think of these things as like basically just stock cars and a lot of stuff, but they're, they're really very sparse if you consider how much structure is in them compared to what your, your own car is. Obviously much more beefy as far as the roll cage and everything else is going to But yeah, no sound deadening, no real interior to speak of, no door hinges, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. No lights, no phone, but they're definitely motor cars. And of course, we still have the wildlife conservation area with all kinds of stuff here. This looks new. We have a relief, I believe, of Richard Childress. In case you thought that, you know, nature was a lot like Disney, yeah, here you go. It's Wolves and mooses and somebody's going down. You're not really sure who. And this guy's still here. And I, I still have no idea what's the... Um, there's, there's no explanation as to who this is supposed to be. I keep thinking Milton Burl, but... Not just Oreo cookies, but Nilla wafers and Nutter Butter, too. And it'll rock. Ooh, Ricky Rudd's wheels. Again, yeah, just such classic lines on those things. Now here's a newer edition. I was, this wasn't here when I was here last. You know, the, the 2018 and 2019, you know, champion Xfinity cars. And that's, uh, this is apparently how it, uh, it finished the championship with the, the scars across the team, the beast uh, thing over there. That, that's cool. That's, that's, that's a neat look. You couldn't have planned the artwork that way. That's just too good. 50th anniversary of RCR. 
1969 to 2019, so... Just... Just a little older than I am. Just a little. I wonder if it's motivational if you're driving a car that has payday written all over it. No, I'm not a NASCAR driver, but I have stayed in a Holiday Inn. Oh, and here we go. We have a, here's the other story. I've seen this previously, but now they've got a whole other... whole other breakdown of what happened with the penny and the new penny kid. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll actually read this, because this is kind of cool stuff. Austin Dillon saw him in the distance wearing a white Ford hat. It was one week prior to the Daytona 500 and Dillon was signing autographs. The boy approached him, big eye. I told him, look man, if you ain't got a favorite driver, I'll give you my hat if you choose me as your favorite, Dillon recalled. And Dillon whipped the hat off his head, signed it, and handed it over. The boy thanked him and pledged his allegiance. The boy came back to Daytona the next day and Dillon spotted him. It was easy, the 11 year old Jordan Wade wearing his hat. Jordan yelled Dillon's name and motioned him over. Dylan ran over. Hey man, I have this for you. Jordan said he flashed a penny. He gave me the hat. I had to think of something to give him back in return. Jordan said, not knowing the, the history here, most people wouldn't pick up a penny, you know, but they pick up a quarter or a nickel, but I gave it to him for good luck. Having no idea. Dylan's mind immediately began, began turning, working his way back to 20 years prior in 1998. The Intimidator, Wes Miller, a lucky penny affixed to the dashboard of that number three Chevrolet while Jude Earnhardt would famously steer into victory lane for the first time in his career in the Daytona 500. Austin Dillon, with a penny affixed to his number three Richard Childress Racing Chevrolet, won the 2018 Daytona 500. He did so with a last lap pass by race leader Eric Almirola. The penny is going to live in the, that. The penny's going to live in that Daytona 500 car, said Dillon. I think it deserves it. It has a home. Most pennies that you find don't have a home. That has a home, you know what I mean? So when Dylan and the number three team were honored at the Richard Childress Racing for the day, when Jordan was there wearing the familiar hat, we were all hoping that he was going to win, Jordan said from the RCR shop. Then, with the luck I gave him, he won. Wednesday was a good day in welcome. As far as, as, far as fan engagement, yeah, excellent fan engagement. It's special, said Dylan. It's cool. I feel like I made a kid who didn't know if he liked NASCAR, and he was just kind of... I feel like I, I made a kid who didn't know if he liked NASCAR, and he was just kind of learning about it. I feel like I made him love it. Because I gave him something, and he gave me something. We would be tied together for a long time. And there's the car. There's the, cha there's the trophy. Let's zoom in on the trophy. And there it is. There's the car heavily signed and marked up with a penny on the inside. Day 2500 champion. Looks like they stuck the flag out the window and burned it up as they were doing the burnout. Or is that, but I don't know. It looks cool. Whatever it is, it looks cool. And this is the sort of thing that makes you want, get yourself an old Monte Carlo and just fix it up. It's doable. This was apparently Richard's car. So back when he was racing. I wonder what the sign is. It's got a sign in here. Uh, it might be too bright to see it. It says gas, it is in, numbered one to five. Gas, oil, water, laps, tires. Okay, what? why in that order? Wouldn't, you, wouldn't tires be fourth at least? You know, you get your gas, your oil, your water. Then get tires, and then do laps? I don't, I don't know. Some Austin Dillon and Ty Dillon stuff going on here. So, so many vehicles. It's unbelievable. Well, it's believable, but I mean, so cool. Championship cars going here. Championship truck in 95. And then, kept as it was when it won the championship in 2001 with the blown tire. 
the Bush Series Championship from Kevin Harvick. Blew the tires off the car and sold them. I do want to say I think Mike Skinner could have could have gotten a better role with you know the Grand Tour if they had just let him be Mike Skinner. That was that was the vibe I got off of. I mean I don't know him personally, but it seemed like they they built too much shtick into the shtick, and it would have been just really cool to get his honest opinions of the cars, not just say that oh it's not American. He was doing a character, and it was a funny character, but I would have liked a little more Mike Skinner myself. And if he wasn't doing a character, well, then I, in some ways that's even cooler. But the same. There's there's some torque required to do this. That takes torque. <laughs> Nothing like hot rods and autographed guitars. And even so, I'm looking at this thing. That takes a certain amount of guts to drive something that fast and that small, don't you think? I mean, it's that's that's a little bitty car. Goes really quick. And I imagine it's got to be a handful. Well, it was another great time had by all here at the Richard Childress Racing Museum. And on that note, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Vince Shooter for Shooter Multimedia. Have a great day, everybody.